I'm Loretta Nostapil. I'm from the Department of Lymphoma Myeloma at the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. And I've been specializing in the treatment of B-cell lymphomas for the last 10 years. CAR T is actually another form of immune therapy that came about about five years ago now. It's a little resource intense, and so we have to identify patients who are appropriate candidates. So again, they meet the FDA-approved indication. Uh, the treating center feels they're appropriate for this therapy, and some nuances there. But once they're deemed appropriate, they actually undergo collection of their T cells. So we had to re physically remove them from their body. They get sent off to a central manufacturing site. A virus is used to modify those T cells because if we just give them back, we can't expect them to behave differently. So we have to change them, and they're changed in two forms. One, they have now a receptor on the surface that will see a protein on the surface of B cells, so CD19. It's a great target, it's on all B cells. And then there's a second manipulation that when it binds its target, it automatically gets activated. And so when a T cell gets activated, secrete cytokines, brings in other immune cells, again creates this firestorm uh, to react against that lymphoma cell. It was first approved in diffuse large B cell lymphoma, and that includes all the large cells. So primary mediastinal, transform from endal lymphoma, such as uh, follicular or even marginal zone lymphoma, high-grade B cell lymphomas, follicular, we have an approved, two FDA-approved products now anticipating a third, and mantle cell lymphoma as well. Cytokine release syndrome is again one of the most common toxicities we see. It usually happens in the first one to two weeks. You know, a lot of fever, chills, blood pressure can go up or down, heart rate can go up or down. Uh, that usually is the most uh, people will experience, uh, but about a third of patients will go on to experience neurologic toxicity. So that can be quite a broad spectrum, but anywhere from confusion, disorientation, uh, to somnolence where patients aren't responding at all to questions. Uh, we've seen silent seizure activity where again, it doesn't look like a full-blown, full-body seizure, but if you do brain waves, you'll pick up some seizure-like activity. Those sound very scary, but fortunately they reverse in all patients. Uh, so it's usually about a week to two weeks of um, really bad flu-like syndrome, maybe a little confusion on top of that. It does recover. And then generally after the first 30 days, we do see low blood counts in about 20 to 40% of patients, which can increase patients' risk for infection. And because CD19 is on the surface of all B cells, not just lymphoma cells, we'll also see low B cell levels for many months. And that we call hypogammaglobulinemia, which can put patients at risk for viral infections particularly. Part of the challenge right now with CAR T is it's probably too limited, and so what that means, it's only delivered at certified centers, and we've tried to look across the map of the U.S. and make sure that patients have access regardless of where they live, but you can imagine, particularly in the western states, there are far too few certified centers. So usually the journey starts with the community oncologist or the primary oncologist thinking this is an appropriate patient, they meet the FDA-approved indication, they refer them to a specialized center. The Specialized center will determine do they appear to be a good candidate. Again, there's nuances there. There's not clear rules for every center, every patient, uh, but generally in our centers, do they meet the FDA approved label indication? Once we feel they're a good candidate, then you have to get insurance approval because you can't collect those cells until you have the whole package essentially approved by patient's insurance. That takes anywhere from one to four weeks. Again, a lot of variability there. But once that's approved, then we set them up for collection. So that usually means meeting with the doctor that's gonna actually collect those cells, talking through what are the risks involved. In my experience, that's really mild in terms of what they might experience, but it's a four hour um, time spent in a chair where their blood is filtered Usually that means a large catheter that's placed. Uh, usually after that, they're done for about three weeks. Now, they may require bridging, so that's therapy aimed at the lymphoma to keep it from getting worse while we're waiting those three to four weeks for those cells to be manufactured. Once we get the green light that they're good to go, then we bring patients back. They do three days of chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy is not aimed at getting rid of the lymphoma. It's aimed at preparing their body for these T cells to be reinfused because they look different now. If we did nothing, the immune system would wipe them out as fast as we infused them. So they get three days of chemo. That can come with chemo-like side effects. So again, nausea, headache, fatigue. Uh, vomiting is almost unheard of. Uh, then they get two days of rest 
and then we infuse those cells. And then we watch them for two weeks, generally speaking, for those flu-like symptoms. Fever, chills, fatigue, a little confusion. Once that's over, then they're monitored less frequently, about once a week, but again within that treating center. And then at day 30, that's usually when they're released to go back to their originating primary oncologist. One of the great things about the Lymphoma Research Foundation is there's really good information that's written for patients and providers, and it's on their website. So I always encourage all my patients, go to lymphoma.org. Um, the other thing they can do is connect with patients through the Lymphoma Research Foundation who've actually gone through CAR T-cell therapy. Because as much as I like to think that I can walk someone through the process, I've never actually walked those steps. And so actually pairing patients up with people that are you know, a month out, five years out, that have done it, that can walk them through the things that we don't even anticipate they might need to know, what information should be provided to caregivers, because it really is a journey. But I think the Lymphoma Research Foundation is a fantastic resource to provide both the knowledge as it pertains to medicine and how we practice, but also the patient perspective and what they need to know. Obviously, I'm excited about this therapy. I think it will change the lives for many patients where traditional chemotherapy has not worked. So I think the more we can do to get information out there to reduce barriers and improve access, that's the best we can do for the lymphoma community at large.